Hello from Zagreb, my name is Paul Bradbury from Total Croatia News and here is an overview of the news from Croatia this week, powered by Pixel. Almost half a billion euros was promised at the International Donor Conference on Demining Ukraine held on Wednesday in Zagreb. The conference brought together representatives of the European Union, USA, Canada, Japan, South Korea, Azerbaijan, Norway, Switzerland and organisations such as the World Food Programme, the UN Office for Project Services, the UN Development Programme and the Geneva International Centre for Humanitarian Demining. Prime Minister Andrei Plankovic announced that Croatia will help Ukraine through its own demining experience and an additional 5 million euros in aid. Like Ukraine, we were victims of aggression and the consequences of the mined areas were felt for decades, he said, adding that the demining process in Croatia will be completed in the spring of 2026. Deputy Prime Minister Davor Božinović and Ukrainian Deputy Prime Minister Yulia Sviridenko signed an agreement on cooperation in the field of mine action a day earlier. Israel has the right to self-defence, but not to revenge and massacre, Croatian President Zoran Milanovic said on Thursday, commenting on the situation in the Middle East. He added that Israel had lost his sympathy. The Gaza Strip is under complete siege, and Israel continues to bombard it in response to Hamas's biggest attack on Israel in decades, killing civilians and abducting dozens. The Ministry of Foreign and European Affairs hung the Israeli flag on Zrinjevac as a sign of solidarity, but Milanovic believes that other flags have no place in Croatia except in strictly regulated situations. I think it's an idiotic move, the President commented. The inspection of the fire site at the Osijek Plastic Processing Company Drava International has been completed and investigations are continuing with the aim of determining the cause of last week's big fire, the likes of which Slavonia does not remember. The prosecutor's office states that during the investigation the necessary evidentiary material was seized, which will be examined and analysed. Further investigations are being carried out in order to establish all the facts necessary for the adoption of an appropriate state attorney's decision, that is, whether criminal charges will be filed. The fire of plastic stored in an open area at the company Drava International in the Osijek suburb of Briest broke out after midnight on October 4th and a large number of professional and volunteer firefighters participated in extinguishing it. During the intervention, three firefighters were injured, one of them seriously. Due to the consequences of the fire and large amounts of smoke, Osijek Baranja County declared a state of major disaster and sent a request to the government to declare an ecological disaster. The World Homeless Day was celebrated in Croatian cities and the central event was in Rijeka, where the public action, The Street is Not a Home, was held on Corsa to sensitize the public about the problem of homelessness. At the Zagreb Central Station, a peaceful protest called A Bench is Not a Bed was held where the government and the city of Zagreb were asked to open a shelter for the homeless with at least 30 beds to repeal the law on identity cards which stipulates the place of residence and to repeal the misdemeanor law on vagrancy. In Croatia about 2,000 people live on the streets and another 10,000 citizens are at risk of homelessness. Recently the number of homeless people in the country has been increasing and the reasons are often the high cost of living including rent, utilities and food. This situation is particularly pronounced in large cities such as Zagreb, Split, Rijeka and Osijek. The worst situation is in Zagreb where there are the most homeless people, estimated at around 1,000 and the number of beds in shelters is 190. The Croatian national football team was defeated by Turkey, 1-0 in the Group D match of the Euro 2024 qualifiers in Osijek, missing a great opportunity to get one step closer to the European competition in Germany. The deciding goal was scored by Baris Alper Yilmaz in the 30th minute after Dominik Livakovic's catastrophic mistake. This was by far Croatia's worst match in a long time. Coach Zlatko Dalic told the media conference after the match that the national team deservedly lost and that they had not played this badly for a long time. He took full responsibility for the defeat. Croatia's defeat opened the group. The Vatrani will be followed by a visit to Wales, who are still hoping to qualify for the Euro. The best Croatian gymnast, Tin Serbic, returned from Antwerp with a silver medal from the World Championships. 
Serbish won the silver medal on the parallel bars behind the golden Japanese Daiki Hashimoto, and in addition to the world medal, the Croatian gymnast secured an appearance at the Olympic Games in Paris next year. After being welcomed at the Zagreb airport, the vice champion of the world and his coach Lucian Kerche were welcomed at and in their club ZTD Hrvatski Sokol in Sokolski Dome. We have already stepped deep into autumn, but the whole week was warm and sunny. The people of Zagreb enjoyed the sun, many relaxed in public parks and by fountains. In Dalmatia it was sunny and very warm with daily temperatures up to 28, so many took advantage of the nice weather for swimming. Sunday brings a big change because a cold front has arrived from northwestern Europe. Rain and showers are expected in the northwest of the country from the morning hours and then it will spread elsewhere. Locally there will be more abundant precipitation accompanied by thunder. Towards the end of Sunday and uh, on Monday night when it cools down enough, the rain will change to snow in the mountains. Temperatures will be 10 degrees lower in places in the interior. It will also get cold in the Adriatic. The storm will blow first in the northern part. During the night it will mostly spread to the greater part of the Adriatic. <laughs>